Hi everybody and welcome to another Bowtie Teacher video. In this video I'll be going through the paper 1FR from the January 2020 sitting for Edexcel IGCSE and giving you the walkthrough and mark scheme, unofficial mark scheme for what I think the answers are going to be for this paper. So let's get started. So question 1A had four numbers which were 3, 6, 2 and 8 and it asked you to make the largest possible number from that so that would be 8, 6, 3, 2. That was for one mark. Question B was to find a multiple of 6 within the numbers uh, in the circle and the multiple of 6 was 24 for one mark and question C was the prime numbers so that one was 17 for one mark as well. Question 2 was a question about the garden and the temperature change so it started off at 5 degrees and it dropped by 9 degrees so the final temperature would be minus 4 degrees C. That was for 2 marks. Question B was to find the mode for 1 mark. So from these temperatures we had to pick out 4 degrees C. And for part C it was to find the median. So we had to rearrange these to put them in order. So we had minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 1, 0, 4 and 4. And we choose the middle value as there's seven of those we're going to choose the fourth one which is this one here so that would be for two marks for question 3a we had to draw a kite on the grid so you would have something that looks like that and make sure that the sides are equal and that they kind of the diagonals cross at right angles so if you did that you would have enough for one mark there part b was to name the eight-sided polygon so you had to put octagon in there for one mark part C part one was a cuboid and how many vertices or corners did it have that would be eight so one mark for each of those for question four we had some equipment that someone had to buy and we worked out how many pairs of gloves were left over at the end so we had two boxes of nails at £3.50 each so that's £7 here then four pieces of wood at £4.20 each that's £16.80 £16 and the hammer at £6 so we're going to add all of that up to see how much money we'd have left from 40 pounds so we're going to do 40 minus this and that gives us 10 pounds 20 and then we're going to divide that by 1.8 to see how many gloves we can have and that gives us 5.6 so we can only actually buy five pairs of gloves when we do 10 pounds 20 divided by 1 pound 80 so five pairs of gloves because we don't have enough for that sixth pair. Okay, so for question five, we had a bar graph and a pictogram here. So it had Mr. Gauzy had 10 of these boxes and that's worth 20. So each of these boxes is worth two. These tiny boxes are worth two. So the four together would make eight points. And then you had to complete it for the other two teachers. So 24 points divided by this 8 would give us 3 of these for the third teacher and then for the fourth teacher here we've got 14 so we're going to have 8 here then each of these is worth 2 so if we have one box that's 10 12 and another box to make 14 so you can have that 3 however you want to represent it but it'll be 3 small boxes there for the fourth teacher and that question is worth four marks for question six we had to do some algebra so 3r times 5t is going to be 15rt or you can have tr here we had to solve this equation so we're going to subtract 5 from both sides and get 4x equals 22 so x equals 5.5 for part c we've got p equals 7w so we're going to substitute w in here and Four in here for y and that gives you 14 minus 20 which equals negative 6 and then 
So here we're going to substitute negative 3 for u and square it and subtract 5 for q. So minus 3 squared from bit mass is going to be 9, 2 lots of 9 minus 5. So that's going to be 18 minus 5, which is 13. For question 7, we had a combination of shirts and trousers for a party. So you had to do a combination of the red, the blue, and the yellow. And then we had a green, orange, and purple. So you would have to make sure that you wrote R, G, R, O, R, P. And then you can have these three combinations. And then you can have those three combinations. So you would be writing like R, G, R, O, R, P, etc. Okay. For part B, we had to do the probability that they would pick a red shirt. So we have a probability of 1 out of 3. And then for part C, we have 20 counters. The rest are black. So we're going to do 20 minus 4 plus 9, which is 7. So the probability that we'd get black is 7 out of 20. For question 8, we needed to work out the perimeter of this shape. And they give us this bit of information here. We need to know the length of the other side of this rectangle. So we're going to do 4 times x equals 28. So x is 28 divided by 4, which is 7 centimeters. So if x equals 7, that means we can add some information to this. We've got 4 for an edge. So we've got 4 of those. And we've got 7, 7, 7 here. And then we just need to work out the length of these two missing sides. So if the whole length is, is 7 and we've got 4 here, that means there's a 3 and a 3 remaining here. So we have to add up all of these for the perimeter. And we've got 4 times 4 plus 4 times 7 plus 2 times 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2 there. So we've got 16 plus 28 plus plus 6, which is 50. And that question is for four marks. For question 9a, we have to round to three significant figures. So we're going to uh, draw a line after the third significant figure, and that's a 6. So it's going to round up to 24.9. Square root of 50.1, let's have a look at that, 7.1. And then 7 eighths as a percentage, so we're going to do 7 divided by 8 times 100. So 7 divided by 8 times 100, 87.5%. Okay, so for question 10a, you had to work out the bearing of A from B. So you're going to join those two with a, a line and measure this angle in here. Unfortunately, I don't have a protractor, but it looks like it's about 40 40 degrees. So hopefully you've got something around that. The distance from B to A, you measure that distance here, and that's 7 centimeters. And every centimeter is worth 2.5 kilometers. So the distance is 7 times 2.5, which is, I think, 17.5. 7 times 2.5 is 17.5 kilometers. And then part C we had C is 115 degrees from A. So you're going to measure from A, clockwise from north, 115 degrees, which is about that line there. And we don't know how long it's going to be, but we do know that it's 20 kilometers from B. So what you should do is measure 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers divided by 2.5 is 8 centimeters. So you need to either put your ruler on B and measure 8 centimeters, or you can use your compasses and draw an arc there, which is 8 centimeters from B. And that point where they intersect will be C. For question 11, we had to do a table of values for y equals 3x plus 2 and sketch it on a graph. So from our calculator, we can use the table function. And we want 3x plus 2. And that's going from negative 2 to 4. Check out my calculator video if you've not seen this before. And so we would get on here, we get minus 2 for x. Get minus 2 is minus 4. Minus 1 is minus 1. 0 is 2. 
1 is 5, 2 is 8, 3 is 11, and 4 is 14. So you would need to sketch your graph, making sure that all of those points are accurate, and your line should go through 2 and have a gradient of 3. So as long as you've pl plotted those points correctly, you should get a, a quite a steep line going through there. If you can do all of that correctly, then you'll be awarded three marks. For question 12, we had some oranges. There were 36 that were bought for 50p each, so 36 times 0 0.5 pounds gives you 80 pounds. The half for 0 0.6 or 60p, so half of 36 is 18, lots of 0 0.6. A third, so 36 divided by 3 is 12, they're sold for 40p. And the rest, so we've got 18 and 12 is 30, so we've got 6 left. And they're sold for 25p each. So we do 18 times 0 0.6, which is um, £10.80. 12 times 0 0.4 is £4.80. And 6 times 25p is £1.50. So if we add all that together, the amount that he actually made back from selling these is um, 21 there, 4, 5, 6, 7, £17.10. So he bought the, apple, uh, the oranges for £18 and he sold them for £17.10. So you can see that he's lost money there. How much money has he lost? Well, he's lost 90p, so 0 0.9 pounds, and we divide it by how much he spent, 18 pounds, and we times that by 100. And when we do that, we will get 5%. Okay, and that question is for five marks. For question 13, we had to describe the transformation to put P onto Q, and that was a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise and the center of rotation was 0, 0. So you needed the rotation 90 degrees clockwise and the center of rotation each for one mark there. And then we had to reflect this shape in the line x equals negative 1. So that is the mirror line there. So we have to count for each of these how many points to the line and then do the same on the other side. So from this point here, we go 1, 2, 3, so 1, 2, 3, it's going to be at minus 4, 1, minus 6, 1, and then minus 4, comma 4 is going to be up there, and you're going to reflect this in that kind of way there. Okay? So if you've done that correctly, you'll get two marks for that. So in question one, they were sharing some money between three people and we had some information that they were in the ratio of three to two to six and the total that Asher and Julia have is 36. So we know that this two to six here is $36, okay? So if we split that $36 into eight pieces, so we do 36 divided by eight, that will give us the value of one share. So 36 over eight, that's 18 over 4, that's 9 over 2, okay? So for Brendan, his share would have been 3 lots of 9 over 2, or 4.5, and that's $13.50, okay? You'd be able to check that if you did all of this added together and make sure that they all add up to the total. For question two, we're doing a show that question, so we always, with these fractions, make them top heavy. So we're going to turn this into 16 over 5 and multiply that by uh, 16 plus 5 is 21 over 8. We can cross cancel a little bit of this, so we've got an 8 here and a 1, so that gives us 42 over 5. And then we divide 5 into 42, which go 8 and 2 remainder, so we've got 8 and 2 fifths. Okay, so that question is worth three marks. Question three, we are rearranging D equals G plus 2AC to make A the subject. So we can subtract G from both sides. 
and we would get d minus g equals 2ac and to make a the subject we're going to divide both sides by 2c to give us a equals d minus g over 2c that's for two marks factorize this so we have a 3 and an f in both so we're going to have 3e minus 4 expand this double brackets we're going to have x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 10 and we collect that together we get x squared minus 3x minus 10 and for part d we have on the numerator we're going to add these powers to get n to the power of 11 and we're dividing by n to the power of 5 so we're going to subtract those powers to get n to the power of 6. Question 4 was a set question and we have blue, grey and white and it asked us for B union G so that's all the letters that are in um, blue and grey so we've got B L U E G R and we've already got the E there so we'll leave that out and have Y the second part of part A was white and not grey so those that are in white but not grey so in grey we have E there so we would have to ignore that because gray would, uh, E would actually be in the grey so we would have W, H, I and T and we wouldn't have the E there the final part was B intersection G intersection W equals an empty set is that correct so if we look at all of these we have an E E and an E in all of these so actually that's not correct and then you'd have to say something like they have E in each of the sets or there's something that's in common to every set Question 5, we had this garden and we have to work out the area of this. So the area of this will be pi r squared, but we're halving it because we've got a half a circle there. So half pi times 7.2 squared. And it says we have 12 boxes of seed to co cover this and each box gives us 6 meters squared. So the coverage, if you like, is going to be 6 times 12 because there's 12 boxes and that would be 72 meters squared. So do we have enough seed to cover this garden? Well, we need to check to see if half pi, so pi divided by 2, pi divided by 2, times 7.2 squared. And that gives you that number there, which is 81.4. So in here, this is 81.4 for the area of the garden and the coverage with the seed is only 72 so we don't have enough seed um, and you could maybe do a difference between these two to show that there's um, a deficit if you like okay we haven't got enough seed to cover that garden question 11 was a bounds question so we've got the weight of the cat 4.3 to 2sf so we can go down to 4.25 and we can go up to 4.35 so the upper bound would be that one and the lower bound would be this one question 6 is a solve question with a quadratic so we can factorize this to x minus 9 x plus 4 and then we can say well x equals negative 4 or x equals 9 so that would be for 3 marks there Question 7, we have a hat where the normal price is reduced by 15%. So the sale price of 20.4 euros is equal to, if we take 15% off, that's 85% or 0.85 of the original. Okay, so we can just divide both sides by 0 0.85 and that will give us our normal price. So 20.4 divided by 0.85 and that gives us 24 euros. Five children have a mean weight of 28 kilograms so the total for five kids would be 28 times 5 which is 140 
and the total for two kids when they have a mean weight of 26.5 is 26.5 times 2, so that is 53. When we subtract the two weights, then we get the total weight for three kids that are left over. So 140 minus 53 is 87. And then the mean is going to be the total divided by the number of kids, and that is going to be 29 kilograms. Question 9 was a gold block that we melt down to make statues, and it wants to know how many blocks we want. So we've got a density and mass and volume question here. So if we have the mass of the whole statue is 5.73 kilograms, that's 5.73 times 1,000 grams, because the density is actually in grams, which it's usually in kilograms. So that's going to be 5. 1730 grams and the density of gold is that so density equals mass over volume so the volume that we're going to require is its mass divided by its density 19.32 so we can work that out as 5730 divided by 19.32 and that is about 296, uh, 297. You keep the full value in your calculator. And then so the volume from each block is going to be, the volume is 1.5 times 2 times 8, which is 24 centimeters cubed. So we're basically trying to find how many 24s go into the whole statue. Okay, so we're going to do the number of blocks is going to be 297 divided by 24. Okay, we've still got that value in our calculator. So we divide that by 24 and we get 12.3. So because we need to melt down that 13th block to actually finish off the statue, we'll have some left. So we need 13 blocks in total. Here we have a regular hexagon and an isosceles triangle because we've got these two lines here. So that helps us to fill in the extra information we need there. And the perimeter of the hexagon is going to be 6 lots of x minus 1, and that's equal to 2 lots of x plus 5 plus the 2x minus 3. So we have 6x minus 6 is 2x plus 10 plus 2x minus 3. So we have 2x when we rearrange this, and we've got 10 plus 6 minus 3 is 13. So x equals 6.5. So the length of one of the hexagon side, so the length was x minus 1, which is 5.5 centimeters. OK, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you add up your scores out of 100, then you're looking at about 70 for a 5 and about 57 for a 4, and maybe 41, 42 for a 3, if it's the same sort of standard as the, as the tests that have gone before. So that will give you an indication of what your current grade is and how hard you need to work for your paper 2FR, which is on the 15th. I wish you all the best of luck.